If you have the ability to look at your screen time average for the week, would you be embarrassed to share what it is? Maybe it's a two to four hours or for the average college student, it's about seven and a half hours. Most screen time averages for children's two to 10 is about three to seven hours. And this is not even mentioning the absurd nine hour average that 11 to 14 year olds have. But why do we let this enigma of socialization and digital quote unquote learning for the younger generations continue to consume our time and energy? To be because we've allowed ourselves to become so accustomed to the online platform that we physically and or mentally cannot restrict ourselves anymore? Possibly. But I'm not here to solve all the issues pertaining to social media and instead I want to shed a little light on what you can do to cut down on those habits of using social media as well as share some of my own experiences with doing such. If you find yourself needing to step away from the screen, you'll need to find something to put your new free time towards. Whether it's going on a run, or if you don't run, maybe even going on a walk, or if you think that's boring, you can always listen to music. I feel like too many people nowadays are trying to create excuses for everything to avoid it, and it doesn't even have to pertain about what I'm talking about for all of you procrastinators out there and calling you out. But one of my own excuses, yes, I might be a uh, you know, hypocrite, but it's okay. One of my own excuses is that I would not be able to talk to my friends or be able to know what's going on in the world. First off, I came to the conclusion that I have my friends' numbers, and they have mine as well, so there's no, there's no question about that. And second, if the news was important, I would hear it by word of mouth. And pop culture is not even that irrelevant. It's actually irrelevant to my life anyways, because who cares that Northwest made a new TikTok with Ice Spice? Like, but let's be realistic. Sometimes I find myself scrolling on Gmail or my Photos app when I have nothing else to do. So there's also that option if you're really desperate to have that like scrolling factor in your life. Unfortunately, another issue that we see is our younger generations who watch anything and everything they see on the screen and reflect this in the classrooms. We see teens feeling the need to change everything about themselves every week. And we also see adults wishing that they had a different life. I'm not saying that you deleting or cutting down on social media will solve everyone's problems or even our societal problems. But you can agree that the entertainment aspect of social media is not benefiting us either. I've had days where I spent most of my time consuming all different types of media just, you know, on the couch all day. And I wouldn't even be able to remember what I had to eat yesterday. It honestly can get that bad if you let it get that bad. Something else that doesn't have much to do with the use of social media and instead accountability is the way that social media has brought attention to cheating. I know that you have done it, and I know that I have done it, uh, not here at UCSD of course, although that's too risky, um, please don't revoke my admission. But I'm unsure of the research on this, but I sense that cheating is becoming more and more prominent within our younger generations because we are spending too much time on your phone. We can make the excuse that there's no more time in the day to do this assignment or study, when in reality it's all because we spent our time on social media. But hey, if, if you're cheating and you are giving into that risk, I don't know what else to tell you. To wrap it up, I wanted to share about how no one knew about the different types of effects that digital media could possibly have on an individual. So when my siblings and I were growing up, we would play these little mindless games on sketchy websites that probably had viruses. I didn't know anything about a virus at the time, so the other half of the time I would watch these small assortment of YouTube videos that were available in 2010. There were not many. Let me tell you, there was like maybe five YouTubers. Eventually my nine-year-old self would create an account on Facebook out of curiosity and that's where it all started, really. Um, and while those internet serfs as a child have changed since today's media is much more accessible and saturated than it was 20 years ago, being aware of your intake and consumption is the first step to a healthy digital lifestyle. All right, thank you for listening.